2017, November 2017. Yeah. Um, I had experience of uh, living in a situation without security, water, food, and power. The people on, on Manus, the locals around the detention wanted to give us food. Police with gun, get back. If you give them food, we kill you. They threatened them that you cannot give these people food. That's crazy. Yeah, they removed the gutter so that we don't get water from rain. They wanted to completely uh, destroy us. Hey boys, before we get started, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today's episode is sponsored by Manscaped. Listen, I'm being legit here. I've been using the Lawnmower 4.0 since I first talked about it. I use it all the time. It's gun, trust me. It doesn't cut you, it doesn't graze you. I don't know how they've done it. It's got a little light on it. It's wireless. It can go in the water. It's a gun razor, trust me. But hey, it comes in packs. They got these little packages. Listen, right? Ball toner, ball deodorant. You might have a giggle, but trust me. You, you, your balls need to be toned and they need to be deodorized, right? It's legit, it's a given, it's a no-brainer. Anyway, I've got a deal for you. You use code the search, 20% off. Listen to this, 20% off and free shipping. Use the code the search. Let's see it, tell them I sent you. Lawnmower 4.0, best ball clipper there is. You can use it any way you want anyway, let's oge. All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Search. Today's guest is someone I've been looking forward to have a yarn with, initially from Iran and of Kurdish background. He was a musician who fled persecution and traveled to Australia by boat in 2013, where he was detained and held in an offshore processing center in Manus Island, which is in Papua New Guinea, for six years. In 2019, he was transferred to Melbourne for medical treatment under Medivac legislation, where he spent 15 months detained in a Melbourne immigration hotel under guard. After a total of eight years spent altogether in immigration detention, last year he was granted a, a bridging visa into Australia. And this year, he was listed as a finalist in the prestigious Archibald Prize. His name is Mustafa Azimitiba. Is that right? Yeah. Sorry, brother, if I got that wrong. Right. Mustafa as a Metabar. And he, he is today's guest on The Search. Welcome, brother, and thank you for coming on my podcast. Thank you How very are you, much brother? Yes, thank you for coming me. in. Bro, what a story, bro. What a story you're going to have to tell, brother. So you're from Iran? I'm Kurdish, yeah. You're, 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 you're Kurdish. And what, what are Kurdish people? Tell us all. What, that's our, is, are they indigenous to Iran? That's true. Yeah. I Only from Iran? Uh, um, well, Kurdish people have been separated in four parts. Yep. Iran, Iraq, Turkey, Syria. But we have a land named yep. Kurdistan. Kurdistan, yep. Yeah. Kurdish people are very hospitable, kind, and uh, Kurdish people fighting against ISIS. Yep. And I see that. I see that. The, the Kur uh, Kurds fighting against ISIS and that, yeah. We believe in uh, unity and... Uh, um, I personally um, fight for human rights and really? I, I believe in equality and yeah, as Kurdish people believe in equality. Yeah, nice. So that's a big thing in your culture. It's a, it's a beautiful uh, culture. We have a special dance. We get our hands, one man, one woman yep. together in order to show that uh, we never give up. We are together. We are equal. There is no difference between Beautiful. men and women. So the governments around Kurdish people don't like this idea. Oh, the governments in the Middle East. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can Imagine understand even, why. Yeah. Imagine even um, Kurdish people are not allowed to study Kurdish in Iran. Oh, really? Even... Having a Kurdish flag is a crime. Dead and set in Iran. They, they kill Kurdish people if they have Kurdish flag. Imagine uh, like Aboriginal Jesus. people in Australia, yeah, how yeah, yeah. many years they have suffered. Yo, bro, how did your journey to Australia, that must have been a massive decision. Did you know people in Australia? No. You knew nobody in Australia? Yeah. 
That was that must have been a big decision for you, Bala. Yeah. How, how was that journey? Tell me about the journey. Like, what is the process of that? Yeah. Like, because I can understand it would have been very, very difficult for you to even make it to Australia. Yeah, I came to Australia for safety. I was yeah. in danger. Yeah. I was a human rights activist. Yeah. 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 So, imagine like uh, what is happening to people in Ukraine. Mm-hmm. What is happening to people in Afghanistan? I didn't have a lottery ticket. I didn't have time to apply to get visa from other countries. I had to save my life. Yeah. I came to your land for safety mm-hmm. to ask, ask you help, yep. to help me. Because they could kill me. They could put me in jail forever because of my idea, because yeah. of my belief. Because I believe in equality. I don't like the government hang up innocent people. Mm. Does that happen over there? A lot of times it, it happened and it is happening. Jeez. They kill people without reason because of their ideas. Yeah. So I came to your land for safety. But instead, your government locked me up in detention for eight years. That's eight, crazy, bro. Eight years. Eight years. But, but also it, it was uh, worse than prison. When we uh, look at this story, it's better we explain it properly that mm-hmm. when I, how they control this language and drive fear to nation that these people are dangerous. So I came to your land how, how, for safety to ask you, help me, I, I am in danger. Yeah. So they take me and they put me in a plane forcibly yeah. with other refugees and exiled me to Manus. It's not transfer, it's exile, exile. exiling people because Papua New Guinea is not a part of Australia. Australia. Yeah, yeah, of course. And they kept me in a remote island which uh, a lot of like uh, thousands of police and officers and Navy of Papua New Guinea and Australia yeah. were there. Um, I my life was surrounded by a lot of fence, electric wires, maximum security prison, maximum like a murderer, security, yeah, like a murderer. guns, yeah. everything. So, Jeez. what can I do? They said it's a processing center, but it was not a processing center. Yeah. Every the reality is that. Uh, uh, like for four years, I like having a phone was a crime. Like they could they could uh, grab us and take us to another place. Which for we, having a phone, it's a, it was illegal to have a phone. To yes, yeah, so what was their reasoning for that? Well, what's their yeah, explanation? Because uh, a phone can create problems for the system. If I if we had allowed to have phone, we you can. We talk could, to people yeah, and exactly. complain and they don't and want you to do that. And show the situation yeah, to yeah, people. Yeah. And then the, these politicians who kept us there, uh, would their policy would be in danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, they, the, the footage will make it to the news and everyone would know about it. What was it like, exactly. brother, when... when um, how, did, how did they arrest you or whatever they done? What, how did that happen? You were in a boat? Yeah. Travelling from... From Indonesia. Indonesia? To... And what, their boat Australia. came? Big military boat, um, guns? And Navy. Navy. Came yep. and... And they got you all off the boat? Saved us, actually. I should say saved us. Saved you? Because the boat was broken. Oh, and was it? The, the water came in and it Ooh. was... I, I was nearly died. I really... I Tell f- me about that, brother. Yeah, it Tell was... Me. So I, what, the boat... Why I helped? was very sick in the boat. I, like, for four days... I was on the boat, very difficult situation on the turbulent water, the ocean. And when they, uh, the, the Navy came to us, they... Uh, you were, you were, ne- you were nearly dying? Yeah. How long is that trip? Even just, from, even just the journey from Iran to Indonesia must have been a big journey. It was like over a month. A month? Yeah, like nearly. And most of that was done yeah. boat? Bus, 
everything uh, well, through India. Yeah, no, not India to yep. Indonesia. Yep. To yeah. Yeah. By plane and then oh yep yep a lot yep. of small little small boats and stuff. Yeah, and then Australia, and then Manus. And how far did they pick you up in the water? How far from Australia? Hmm. I think it was. Oh, you wouldn't six know. Ma- it, I, we yeah. were in the in the ocean of Australia. Yeah. In the you were in the in the, in the oceans, yeah. yeah. And then it took six hours. Six hours to yeah. get the land. Oh yeah. Yeah. From where they picked you up. Yeah. So you wouldn't have even been far. Not very. And so far. all the way to come here to ask for help, and right before you get here, they come with the navy and took you straight to Papua New Guinea. Uh, to um, they kept us in Christmas Island for three weeks, oh, yeah. nearly three weeks. Which is near Indonesia, eh? Christmas Island. Yeah. Yeah. And then after three weeks, one day they came to detention and they asked us to pack our stuff. Yeah. And they are gonna move to a place, and we didn't know where, what's gonna happen. Did you think at that time that it will be eight years? Never. No way. I never heard anything about Manus. Like, where is Fucking Manus? Fucking eight years, brother. Yeah. You would, uh, there's no way. In that situation, you would have thought, all right, a couple more weeks, couple, and then a month goes past, then two months, what's going on, one year. Brother, eight years. That's like a big center. It's like a murderer, yeah. brother. They said they are going to take us to a processing center. Yeah. We never knew that they are going to take us to Manus or Papua New Guinea. And then they kept us in a it's a it was a like a big quarantine room yeah and then one by one they took us to into the detention center yeah what's life like in there oh what's what's how do you live in is like houses and six people one house or how is it very very uh very on horrible on hygienic yeah very dirty um and what Ten who the people you tents live? Yep. Sorry. And very small wooden uh, Did you rooms. say tents? Tents, yeah. Jesus. And two or three compounds f- uh, were completely white. Yeah, it was... Uh, I had the experience of three years of white torture. So everything was white in order to uh, make your brain empty like you don't remember anything after that wow yeah. everything's yeah. white the walls yeah. the furniture Every, the table everything, even plate the spoon like everything you can imagine that's crazy the sunlight the Three years, you're of, just saying just white yeah and also the lines if we when we wanted to have lunch or dinner imagine f- uh, there were uh, four compounds so the compound I uh, lived was Oscar compound for three years, mm-hmm. and 500 people had to be in two lines to get small food full of insects, full of hatred. Like it's like just, punishment, of course. And they were very slow, on, uh, and we were on in the line uh, in the sun. The imagine the. Yeah. The weather in Papua on Manus yeah, yeah. was at least 40 degrees. It sounds, brother, I, I've been in jail 13 years. What you're saying sounds worse than jail, I yeah. promise you. It sounds worse than New South yeah. Wales jails. So you were allowed to study. Of course. They, yeah. they want you to study. Yeah. I Me, mean, I didn't study because yeah. I'm lazy, but they want you to study. Yeah. At least you get the opportunity. So they yeah. give you nothing there. Yeah. The guards are Papua New Guinean or Aussie? Both. Both. Mixed up. Mostly uh, Aussie. Mostly Aussie. Yeah. They like, are they like um, military officers? Yeah. Uh, most of them were in army. Really? According to... Yeah. The and what are they like? Uh, are some of them nice? Are they bastards? Uh, Do they, are they angry to you? Yeah. So not nice. Not nice. Not nice. Definitely. How can... Um, how can you live under those circumstances yeah, and their on minds? those yeah, circumstances right. and yeah. uh, they left us alone in it was in 17 uh, in uh, 2017 November 2017 yeah. 
um, I had experience of uh, living in a situation without security, water, food, and power. They left us alone, and uh, the, it, under the command of Australian government, well, they, they, they just abandoned. Uh, they stopped giving us food, water. Um, no, so there's no security, nothing, no staff, no, no electricity, security, no water, no food. This is. I, so it just turns into. I repeat just this word: no water, no food, no power. So even the, the you know, I believe people are nice, hmm. generally in the world. The people on, on Manus, the locals around the detention, wanted to give us food. Police with gun, get back. If you give them food, we kill you. They threatened them that you cannot give these people food. That's crazy. Yeah. Even the locals knew yeah. you weren't getting fed, yeah. no water, and of they wouldn't course. let them. So we dug in the ground because we had to survive. Yeah. We dug in the ground. We had water from the well. We boiled the water. Um, 2017, this 2000, happened. Yeah, Bro, for 24 days, not one day, it's not crazy. two days. Even the well, uh, they came and sprayed They poison. fucking sprayed it. Yeah, they put a stone on it. They removed the gutter so that we don't get water from rain. They wanted to completely... Uh, destroyed us but we were one I one thing I'm gonna tell you <coughs> we were together yeah there was not any uh, kind of uh, any fights wars, yeah gang mentality. no any nationalities no, no one beautiful. said we are Kurdish or from <coughs> Iran or from Somalia Sri Lanka all we were like a family yeah that's together crazy. we help each other yeah, where, where were a lot of the people from? So you would have grown really close relationships in there. Of course, with, with I all have the boys seen that were in there. A Women as well, just boys. No, just boys. <coughs> yeah. And where where are a lot of the people from? Like you said, mm. uh, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, Somalia, Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan, yeah. a lot of other yeah nationalities were there. Yeah, a lot, a lot of like African people, Sudanese, Sudanese, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you speak, had like a very strong brotherhood in there. Yeah, that's true. So what was it? What was there when you would ask them? Because I can imagine. So six years you live there, right? One year goes past. You're asking questions. Is there is there um, there's like welfare officers? Obviously, do you have uh, case workers that are they pretend that they're responsible for getting you into Australia or whatever? Okay. And you ask those people, when am I getting out of here after one year, two years? What, what, is, what, is, what do they say? Exactly. This yeah. is a good question. Yeah. Uh, we ask them that how long we are going to stay there. Yeah. No answer. That It depends on the uh, prime minister or That's what they minister say. of immigration. Yeah. So imagine every day we had this question. And they, there was no answer. And I got my refugee status in 2017. Yeah. So I had, I, according to the processing center and how they created this game, most of refugees, myself included, got refugee status. It, it means that uh, when someone gets refugee status, uh, it means that they cannot get back to their homeland because they are in danger. Yep. And after getting the uh, refugee status, Mm, they should be released into community. Obviously, yeah. But we were still in detention. So you're re now you're refugee status. Of course. So they're not going to send you home because then you're not a refugee. But you're a refugee, but you can't come into Australia. Uh, I am <laughs> refugee. They know that they cannot send me back to my yeah. homeland because over there I am in danger. Danger, yeah. And this, it was a. They say we we cannot answer this question. It's a very complicated situation. It depends on the, the minister and prime minister. That would have been so much psychologically to deal with with, with some people, some of the people in there. Like, yeah, I can, I can tell that you're strong. And also the medical system. Yep. That there, was n there was nothing uh, about uh, treatment. It was Panadol and water. 
Imagine Everything how yeah, 14 now. billion dollars yeah. were spent for this cruel game. It was Panadol and water. Even no proper food, no proper living condition. Everything was chaotic, torture. But I never wanted to give up. Yeah. We n didn't want to give up. We wanted to show people in Australia that we are yeah. innocent and how they uh, tell people that we are illegal is wrong. Yeah, yeah, of, of course. Um, could you, so what year did you leave there? 2013. No, no, oh. in uh, Manus Island. What, um, what year did you come to, what did you get flown to Melbourne? Uh, for treatment, yeah, it no. was uh, 11th of November 2019. 2019. Did you notice between 2013 when you first landed there to 2019, did the attitude of, did the attitude ever change? Did you slowly notice that more and more people from the outside were trying to aid you? Uh, but were they telling you, like, did, did the attitude change towards your incarceration there were you was it slowly becoming more realistic that well oh, we got a date maybe one day or did, was it just the whole time fucked well uh, people slowly became aware of the situation not not a lot of people but uh, some groups of people humanitarian in, in people yeah, in they, australia yeah, yeah they start talking about us yeah because it become a big issue yeah. here at the start no one yeah. cared yeah. At the start, it was ha, 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 ha. It happened, that, uh, that movement happened when they killed my friend Reza Barati. So it was before that, it was Scott Morrison who came to detention yep. and pointed at us. They pointed at me. They, uh, Scott Morrison came to detention and he pointed at us that you go back to your homeland. This, this uh, game... Uh, takes years and years. Go he come back. and said that? Yeah. Stood he in was, front of you and yeah. pointed at you and said, go, like, you're yeah, not coming go here. Go back to go your away. homeland. There is no way. You, you will never, ever be resettled in Australia. There is no way. What year was that? It was 2014. So right at the start. Yeah. So he started uh, the hatred. He started uh, the kind of uh, feeling that we yeah. hate you. Go yeah. to your homeland. Really, that's how he made you feel. And imagine how we were peaceful and yeah. we said that we uh, want freedom. We want to be resettled in a safe country. This is what yeah. we want. And uh, to be in a safe country is our human right. This kind of, that situation was not safe at all. Yeah. And then after a couple of months, the they shoot at us they killed my friend they hundreds of refugees were what was your friend's name again reza barati reza he, barati yeah he was a kurdish uh, refugee he, who he was uh, 24 years what, what was they, the circumstances in him. that um a lot of uh, um officers yeah. Papua New Guinean officer and uh, some of the Australian yeah. uh, officers were involved in that riot and yeah. uh, a lot of shooting happened. Really? Yeah, so m hundreds of refugees were injured. He was in a different compound yeah. and uh, all detention uh, were got involved in, the, uh, in yeah. that situation and we deeply got traumatized when, yeah. when he uh, he, was when he was killed murdered, like yeah. for like two months no one could talk with each other it was a very sad situation and still uh, no one has answered to his no one's responsible family for that, that oh, what happened really? to reza why there is no any uh, court case yeah. about him far out I'm, i wonder what scott morrison's position in the government was then what, what, what he was, was he, a foreign uh, affairs minister or yeah he was a um, minister of immigration minister of immigration yeah that's shocking that he come and said that eh? with hatred eh? yeah you could tell that every time they there was a 
like a meeting that go back to your, have you thought about going back to your homeland? Go back to your homeland. Even when we went to medical, yeah. uh, the, when I say medical, clean, it, was, it was a tent. A tent where they hand out yeah, Panadol, that's just, it, until exactly. you go away. And the doctor was a torturer that uh, some, like I had the experience of like stomachache, I remember. And he pushed my, the doctor pushed my stomach and said, no, this is not your stomach. It's, uh, um, and sometimes I coughed and they said, no, that's, this is okay. You just need to have, um, you need to drink more water. So on purpose, and they're making you hate yeah. your life. And also after that, he always mentioned that uh, you if, you, you, if, if you, don't if like you it, think yeah. it's difficult, this is not a clinic. You can't get back to your homeland if you cannot bear with this pain. They said that. Of course. And every time I said, can, at least can I study in this uh, situation? I don't want to give up. And they said at the moment, you can put in a request. We take this request to home affairs and they can reply. And never, ever, even now, like it's like 10 years. I am a free man now, mm. but I am not allowed to study. I'm not allowed to get a qualification. That's crazy. No center link, no accommodation from the government. And when I say uh, I am not allowed, it means that hundreds of people like me are, in, are stuck in this situation that they uh, reduced us as a, like a, a kind of uh, victim that you cannot do anything. Go back to your homeland. So even now today, while you're still you're walking around in in Australia, walking around Sydney, you still feel that they're playing the same mind games, the same games to make you hate it here. So you go the exactly. same things they've done in the detention centre. Exactly, center. I was in a um, in a um, yeah. What happened? In, in interview with uh, Julie Bishop. He she was in. Uh, on the project and she asked me that why do you want to live in Australia it, look at this question how yeah. how she uh, want us to hate Australia but yeah. this is this question is full of hatred this well, they asked you on the project yeah she asked me this question that uh, but I I was not allowed to ask her a question like yeah. Why she asked me a question like this, a person who was a part of my torture, like she was a um, foreign minister mm. when, she, uh, when I was in detention. And look at this situation. After like 10 years, I am still not allowed to study. Yeah. People like uh, Nelson Mandela that during apartheid was allowed to study mm. in jail. You had experience of yep. being in, in mm -hmm. jail and you, yeah, you know about to study. Doesn't matter you, what job. Are, you have the right yeah. you have the right to be in a safe place in even in in jail mm. you are allowed to see your family and friends if you but we didn't have these rights mm. and no, not only these uh, sad stories uh, the other parts is how they reduced us as numbers. Like, my name was KN088 for eight years. That's how they yeah. refer to you as yeah. the number. Not most. It was every time officers came if they wanted to, uh, if I had an interview. KN088. KN088. KN I forgot my name. The That's crazy. Freedom, uh, the... Uh, good part of freedom is I get I feel I get my identity the back. back yeah yeah and still I feel uh, they stop me f to to develop my life yeah. but I never give up I believe I always uh, rely on good people in Australia yeah. I always uh, believe in uh, peace kindness and connection how how I see people are nice. Yeah. People in Australia are nice. It's all the decision of uh, the politicians yeah. who are dividing us. Yeah, you're 100% right about that. Let me ask you, when you left there, what, it was a um, medical emergency? Um, yeah. And they had, so that was when there was Medivac? 
Yeah. And what happened there? You got flown to Melbourne? Yes. Uh, the Minister of Immigration, Peter Dutton, yep. uh, signed my Medivac application to be transferred from Papua New Guinea to Australia for medical treatment. But when I arrived, they locked me up in a room. They, I in was on the, on the third floor of uh, a hotel. They used the hotels, like Mantra prison. and the park as prisons. And uh, the places uh, were in a res residential area. So, and uh, imagine I was locked up in a, in a place. Yeah, the, it was like a, the size of this room. Yep. No, there, there was a glass. Uh, I wa we, we were not allowed to open the window. We couldn't open the window. Imagine transfer someone who is suffering from asthma and PTSD yep. and locking up this person in a place that cannot breathe. So you're in an, ap an apartment in Melbourne, in the city? Yeah, in the and city. The, and the whole apartment or just you, the whole apartment was like a, a jail? Uh, in, you, the, in the mantra, it was third floor. Yep. The, they use it as a jail. So the third floor, it's there's... A few people locked up in there like can't leave. Around sixty refugees 60 like views. me, yeah. And what's there in the hallway? Guards with guns? Uh, not, not with guns. Yep. Uh, it uh, the security was intense, definitely. Yeah. It was a narrow corridor. The, the, it was the place that I could walk outside the the my room, like yep. a narrow corridor with a lot of officers and the noise of officers the radios all day so i didn't want to even see the uh, face of securities i i was i prefer to stay in my room. Stay in your room and they came to my room 10 times in the morning at six o'clock for checking to make sure all the time hey, what hours every two hours every well several times a day yep. uh every day without exception, like 6.30. Around 6.30, they came to check that. Yep. Am I alive or not? Yep. That's it. But how I ha have this feeling, I have PTSD. So I yep. jolt off from bed and uh, imagine the, in front of my room, it was a cement wall. Yep. I was claustrophobic that the cement wall came to my face and recedes. So it was a moment that I thought uh, they are gonna kill me every day. What is the reason they are gonna come to my room? And they said, oh, we are gonna check the TV is broken or not. Yeah. And then after two hours, another reason. Another excuse. Imagine for over 400 times, they did pat search of my body. Yeah. And I was transferred to Australia for medical treatment. Yeah. So and even, you stayed in that apartment yeah. for? Fif around 15 months. So crazy. Yeah. And what about other people? They were in there a long time. So you were there with 60 other boys? Yeah, around 60 other. And you all long time in there? Yeah. So I was in touch with uh, media, newspapers, and they said, tell us how you can be alive in that situation. Mm. So the good thing is that we uh, were allowed to have phones. So we were uh, in touch with hundreds of people good people in Australia outside yeah. uh, that rooms. What could you see outside your window? You weren't allowed uh, to open it. You yeah, looked out, what could you see? Yeah, so Cars, people, um, or was it just park? In the, in the corridor, yep. uh, I could see people in the, in the street. Oh, from the window in the corridor? Yeah, there were some windows. I could see them in the streets. Did you used to just watch? Well, the, you would have nothing the, to do the rooms, uh, the glasses yeah. were tinted oh really yeah so they couldn't see us yeah we could see people i yeah. i remember i put the my the light of my phone on the tinted glass yeah and i wrote like love oh really and i said people in australia my message is love i we don't yeah. hate australia we love australia yeah and these politicians are uh, telling you yeah. Lie that we are not dangerous. Yeah. Can I ask you, brother, before all of this horrible shit happened to you, right, what, it, what was your outlook on Australia 
what is the outlook in in, in like Kurdistan? What is the of outlook course. on Australia? Is it, is it a good outlook? You know, do you think of Australia as, as a beautiful place? Of like course. even back then, yeah. Yeah, of course. As I said, I trusted, like I yeah. came to Australia for safety that I, I thought when I tell my story to uh, Australia, yeah. they will help me. You will be accepted and... Yeah, and little did you know, nightmare starts. Yeah, eh, the nightmare start, and um, and I have a feeling that uh, I never give up. Like yeah. what? What? There is a reason I have to continue. I don't want to harm myself. I yeah. don't want to be. Was uh, there a lot of people that harm themselves? I I have seen a lot of. You uh, would have seen scary. A stuff. lot of uh, things in detention that. Yeah, uh, some that's of crazy. refugees harm themselves. It's not everyone so strong with that. Yeah, I know, that's 100%. true, and it's uh, it's very normal yeah. to keep people in that situation. Every, I I am sure if if they keep even animals in that situation, mm -hmm. they they would die. They couldn't survive. Yeah. So, but, but after eighteen, fifteen months, sorry, in the apartment, the jail in Melbourne. What was what was the day? What was the lead up that said they're going to grant you? Uh, what is that, a bridging visa? Is that yeah. what it's called? Mm -hmm. ha, what was that day? Did you know it was coming? No. Nah. One day they just come to you yeah. after eight years. Imagine and when they, they said Moz yeah. or NS to whatever yeah. they call you, and they said, I "Got a got a good luck for you. You're going to yeah. be happy today. Yep. You're free." It was like that. That uh, there was a list and around 50 refugees are going to be free and this is the numbers and uh, they said that in this visa you cannot study yep. no uh, so they gave you strict rules yeah that this is when you sign it you have six months visa and after six months uh, you need to renew so imagine every six months i have to renew still now apply yeah so every six months you still have the anxiety. Of course. Are they going to give it to me again? Or Are they going to put me yeah. in jail again? Are they going to exactly. try to fucking hell? Yeah. And the reality is that fourteen over fourteen billion dollars have been spent in order to keep these innocent refugees. So it means that every single one of these refugees, each number. Uh, is a million dollars for this spent, policy. Yeah. So we put these numbers in this situation and we get tax from people. Yeah. It's a good business for them. They, True. they, they are, money. yeah, it's a huge money. Far and in, on the other hand, they tell people that these, these are dangerous. They get the money from them. So imagine these, if, if we don't have these numbers in detention, how, um, many good things can happen like this money can yeah. be used for medical help yeah 100% then dental help ambulance school a lot mm. of things you know better than me yeah 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 for sure so when they let you out that day when they gave you your bridging visa that day you got out yeah it was that uh, morning you woke up you didn't know nothing they come to you they said you're one of the things, what happened? Well, like, tell me how, they, they told you, I know they told you the rules, you can't do this, you can't do that. And what did they say? Like, get out. Yeah, so imagine uh, no any support from the government, but yep. of course I have a lot of good friends in Australia, yep. so. Uh, no house? I, I lived in my friend's house. What if you didn't have a friend's house? What, yeah, they, they, they don't in care? The street. Get out in the street. Yeah, I would be in, in homeless in the street. Yeah. If, they, if I didn't have uh, good friends in Australia, definitely I would be homeless. So at the start, you stayed in Melbourne? Friend's house? For six months, yeah. Yep. And then I traveled to Sydney. To Sydney. And I decided to live in Sydney. Yeah? Yeah. How long have you been in Sydney now? It's uh, one year... Uh, only, so it's only, only Something, a year. yeah. So all of this just happened, what, 18 months ago? Something like that, yeah. Wow. In whole my life, like less than two years I am free. In whole my life. Bro, this is my favorite part of your story. Okay. You were 
nominated for the Archibald Prize for drawing a portrait of yourself yeah. with coffee and what? A pencil? A toothbrush? A toothbrush, yeah. Tell me about that. You're an artist. Yeah. Uh, I painted uh, uh, this self-portrait four months ago in my friend's studio. Yeah. And uh, I submitted to Archibald. Yeah. And one day I was at work and they called me and said, you have been selected as a finalist of Archibald 2022. No way. And I was very happy. And they said, this is confidential. You cannot, That's don't, fine, don't tell know. anyone yet. <laughs> so what did, did that mean you go, you went somewhere? Like I was happy. I was flying. My, <laughs> my manager said, what is, what's yep. happening? I said, it's very good, but yeah, it's yeah, confidential. Yeah. Like, you can't say nothing. I cannot tell you. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but do, do, do you do that? What about now? Do they have that artwork on display somewhere? Where is it? I loaned it to Art Gallery in New South Wales. In, in, in the city? Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. In Wollamaloo, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they are going to take it to Melbourne and a couple of other um, art galleries That's in crazy. Australia. I want to Google. I want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> That's mad. So, and you do music too, bro. Yeah. So, yeah. But but I tell you something. Yeah. I, I I was not an artist. Oh, you weren't an I, artist? I too. never had any experience of art before detention. I started uh, painting in, in detention with a lot of suffering. Like, yeah. even they didn't give, give me art supplies. Yeah. So I didn't have any experience of art. When I ask officer, can you give me some paint? And they said, we are not, uh, we cannot give you paint. Yeah. Because you eat the paint and it kills you. Can you imagine? How, you and I thought, paint. why they are thinking I'm going to eat the paint? I got <laughs> very angry. I got very angry. Yeah. But I am a person, when I, when I get angry, um, I never f- fight with them. Even, yeah. even with yelling or yeah. any... Uh, mental yeah. anger. I try to change the situation mm. or create something. I came back to the tent. With, it was like 50, in each tent, 50 refugees yeah. live in a very uh, difficult situation, 25 bunk beds beside each other. And there was a table and there was a cup of coffee and a toothbrush beside it. Mm. And I just grab the coffee and toothbrush and pour it on a paper and drag oh, really? some lines. And I just look at it. I just, yeah. it, it made me a smile. So I just, for, for fun, every week, I had this funny experience. Yep. And I continued this unusual technique. And after some years, That's I learned how, how, to, how to paint with uh, very simple materials yeah. and coffee was the only material i can use mm. as paint uh, i tell you something there is some um, there is uh, the meaning of resistance when when you want to be strong uh, it's a it's a movement it's a moment of victory it's a moment that whatever happens even if they uh, would kill me i wouldn't i wouldn't give up even my soul would be strong yeah. like i i have decided to be strong yeah. i can be strong with coffee with toothbrush and i learned this uh, technique without studying like when you say you cannot can you imagine i am not allowed to study art yeah. but i am a finalist of art that's yeah, crazy yeah <laughs> it's like with coffee and a yeah toothbrush. it's like <laughs> fuck this system yeah. I, I don't need this kind of yeah. a study i i achieved it from my resistance yeah. i achieved it because wow. of my belief and i and i never stop i continue and i want to paint more with yeah. toothbrush that's only hectic. toothbrush yeah <laughs> that's hectic far out bro is there to this day, is there still refugees in these? In what's going on with that situation? So we don't hear about it. I don't know. Me personally, I don't know. I couldn't tell you now if Manus Island is even open. Is it closed? Is there refugees still? What's happening there today are, with that situation? There are refugees in uh, Papua New Guinea and Nauru. Yep. 
They are like me. They are waiting for their freedom. Imagine it's like uh, nearly... Still today? Yeah. They are around 200 refugees over there and around um, over 1,000 refugees in, in detention in Australia. Yeah, really. Imagine each, each one of them is a number. Yeah. Again, money. Again, millions of dollars. Yeah. Do we need this kind of detentions what, what is the reason that we are keeping these detentions if if they are if they have refugee status why we are keeping these people inside yeah. this what is the um, mentality what is the the idea of keeping these people in mm. in this kind of torture centers yeah, it's right. it's not processing center it's a torture center so moz what's something that us everyday people can do to help the, like the, the situation with refugees, both the way that they're managed, treated, and reintegrated into society, into Australia, when they eventually are. What's something we can do? I really believe that people in Australia are nice. I am sure uh, there are a lot of good people in Australia who want to help refugees, but most of them don't know what is the, the, the best way to uh, improve uh, a life for a refugee. Mm -hmm. Do we have enough support? As a, as a refugee, uh, I visited a dentist and uh, she checked my teeth and the cost is like $11,000. Yeah, of, really. Um, for, the you, dent yeah. for the dental yeah. help. It's unrealistic. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, people do, do people know about the living condition of living conditions of refugees in Australia? Um, I am sure they don't know about it. Yeah, no, they. I, I know that. Yeah. They don't. Do we have any organization who provide dental help for refugees? The answer is no. We don't have any organization to help dental help. Mm. Do we have any organization who provide? Uh, accommodation for refugees. We don't have this uh, organization. Yeah. So I, I believe the donation who are going to charities need to be checked that yeah. how these charities are spend the money. I, I don't want the charities uh, spending the money for lobbying and yeah. for their egos and logos finding uh, kind of um, trying to make themselves look like they're look doing like this, look good like things better. Speaking, like, he speaking. Exactly. Now. I have seen a lot of a lot of banners that refugees are welcome here. And when I ask them questions, they said, "You are uh, you are still on the list. Yeah. How long refugees should be on the list? I mm. how many times I uh, have received." messages from medivac refugees that they don't have support they don't get support while people have donated millions of dollars to mm. i don't want to blame the organizations i want to say this uh, policy need to be changed as well because it fails people no i agree 100 percent I, it actually confuses me. What's the point of granting someone and recognizes them as a refugee and then saying, yeah, you can come into the country and then giving them no opportunity to develop their life, not only for their benefit, but for everyone's benefit. Like what? It doesn't even make sense that they want refugees walking around like homeless people. Like it just doesn't even make sense. You know what I mean? So everything you're saying, 100%, brother. 100%. Yeah. I love that. What a story. Thank you, brother, for coming My on. Pleasure. Very inspirational. My pleasure.